God bless you and welcome back to the triad room, Jehovah Rapha, where sin is a sickness and Christ is the cure. Um, for this video, I'd like to ask a question, I'd like to ask questions, and it's this. Are greater works being carried out by the church of today compared to the church of old or the church of the New Testament? I use the term greater works based on the scripture, John 14 verse 12, where Jesus said this. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the Father. Greater works. My, my wife sent me a video uh, some days ago, or two videos actually, of this young minister, young lady, um, ministering under the power of the Holy Ghost, um, speaking to uh, people who had were demonic possessed and casting them out, um, praying for a children or a child who was dumb and that child speaking again. And as I watched uh, those video clips, I was like in awe, you know, that God is still changing and transforming lives, you know, through this fashion. And although it was wonderful for me to see that, you know, to God be the glory, I started to reflect you know, are those uh, still the norms in today's church? Is it still the norm? Um, I must make this clear, you know, that the potency or the power of God to save and to heal has never diminished. It's the same yesterday, today, and it is forever. So what I really want to focus on is when you look at the modern day Pentecostal or evangelical movements, in my opinion, for what it's worth, in my opinion, there seems to be more emphasis placed on uh, preaching, exhortation, teaching, giving, leadership, um, which, as I say, is a, they're all wonderful things. Um, but the gifts of the Spirit, such as prophecy, uh, the sermon of spirits, miracles, healings seem somewhat uh, sidelined. They are not as prominent these days in our denomination. I don't want to come across as being critical, um, just given an observation from my perspective. You know, um, I also believe we are truly uh, living in an age where. We have seen some of the greatest um, Christian orators, uh, influential preachers, teachers, leaders we have ever known, um, for which you know I give God glory and thanks for the likes of the late great Billy Graham, um, Martin Luther King Jr., Martin Luther of the Reformation, m the late great Miles Monroe, currently Bishop T.D. Jakes, Joel Austin, uh, Pastor Enoch uh, Adiobo. Um, Joyce Meyer, uh, Priscilla Sharia, um, one of my favorites, and many, many more uh, great orators, preachers, teachers of the modern age. Um, but in saying that, where are the healings? Where are the miracles? Where are the signs and wonders on the same level as all these preaching and teaching? In my opinion, I think all these things should be on par. There should be in part, uh, it should be the norm, the norm in the body of Christ um, to see signs, wonders, miracles and healings today. It should be the norm. Um, I don't think it should be the exception. I don't think we should go to church and say, oh my God, guess what happened today? Um, someone received their sight or someone um, was prayed for who was crippled and started to walk again. It shouldn't be an exceptional thing it should be the norm in our churches in my opinion in my opinion and if not why not first corinthians 12 4 to 11 says this now there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit and there are differences of administration but the same lord and there are diversities of operation but it is the same god which worketh in all but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, 
to another the works of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the sermon of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing every man several as he will. That's 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 11. The key word throughout this verse of scripture is by the same spirit, the same spirit. All these gifts are given by the same spirit. And the last time I checked, the Holy Spirit at work in the world today is the same Holy Spirit that was at work in the New Testament and time of old. Is the same Holy Spirit that the disciples used to raise the dead, open blind eyes, cast out devils, demons, and discern spirits. The self same Holy Spirit. As I said earlier, the same yesterday, today, and forever. So, if the Holy Spirit is as potent now as it was then, what has changed in the church today? What has changed? We have to look ourselves in the mirror because it has to be us. It has to be us. The challenge for the church today, and I speak of myself when I say the church of the day because I'm part of the church today, is we have to return to the old landmarks and begin to operate, um, especially in a, a secular age um, where we need the church to be dynamic, not only in preaching and teaching and leadership. You know, the word, yes, changes lives and transform lives and people are saved. But the world needs to see a demonstration now of the power of the Holy Spirit with the laying of hands, with us speaking the word. And we'll see them begin to say, oh my God, God is still very much alive. God is still very much potent. He's still able to save and heal. Jesus not only taught, he also demonstrated while he was on earth, the power of God to turn water into wine, the power of God to raise the dead, the power of God to open blind eyes, to make the dumb talk and the lame walk. Surely it's time we did the same. May God bless you. May God keep you until next time. Dear viewer, if you've been challenged by this message and would like to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, please pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Come into my heart and forgive me of all my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Congratulations, you've been born again. My advice to you would be to find a Bible-believing fellowship to continue your walk with God. May God bless you, may God keep you. Until next time.